everyone out there, another episode of Solar TV we're excited to bring to you, brought to you by the one and only Solar Wolf Energy. And um, before I get started with this real presentation we want to do today, I want to let you know that I did definitely not write this, because if I did, you would not be able to write, read this. I wouldn't be able to read this, it would be that bad. So uh, Taylor wrote this for everybody, so thank Taylor. Alright, so this video today is going to be about the difference between the mindset of the people who think solar for their home is a cost versus the ones that think it's an investment. So we'll go into that a little more. So let's start off, right? So obviously in the investment side we have over here, we have some of the bullet points we've kind of gone over as a team and thought the most obvious ones you guys can kind of relate to without having gone into too much depth and explanation. So we're gonna go right here. The first one is the house value appreciation. There has been several studies you can go online and check it out through Energy Sage and I believe the NREL that have released reports that house values, obviously regionally it's different, northeast it's a lot more, I think in Southern California it's more as well, Midwest it still has value, um, but it's not as much, but also the costs are actually a little less to install. So, but on average in, in the northeast, home prices appreciate in value between thirty to fifty thousand dollars just by putting solar on your home. Because it's not just the transit value of the asset itself and the table and the, and the labor and time and materials it took to put it on, it's also the inherited value going forward of the electric bills being eliminated, right? So that's all considered when you think of the home value appreciation. Another one is the savings on electric bills. That's pretty obvious. I would, I would think that um, most people know when you go solar, that's, that's kind of why you're going solar. So if you have 150, 250, we have some customers that have an $800 a month electric bill. Kind of crazy. So um, if you can eliminate that or at least cut it in half, Obviously, it helps, and then you also have curb appeal. Now, this is a, obviously this is a variable, right? So some people don't like the way this looks. They want the panels in the back of the house. We get customers that want that. We also have some of the some of the younger, the more millennial crowd. They like the side, the, the way that looks, the the size that fits in the roof, or the proportionate sizing. So if, if it's symmetrical on the roof and it fits right, if it's a black roof, we use black all black panels. Obviously, the aesthetic can make it look cooler, right? And if it's done right, installed correctly, it can bring more value. And if you're going to look for resale, also something else consider, like if you're in an up-and-coming area and you're more likely to sell the house to a younger couple, that's something to consider as well. So, curb appeal, that's, that's subjective. Depends on the potential buyer. It depends on the person installing it, if you're just going to keep the house. But it's definitely something to think about. Another one going forward here is the length of the roof life. So this is, this is pretty obvious to those of us in the industry. I think a lot of homeowners don't understand this. Um, and I'll give you an example. So if you have, a, let's say, a black shingled roof, it attracts a lot more sun. So because of that, the roof gets actually significantly hotter. That would say like a gray or like a tan roof. So those shingles will tend to wear out a lot faster because the number one reason your shingles wear out, it's not people think like snow and rain or whatever. It's dry rotting from the sun. It actually rots the shingle out. So because of that, and you're putting panels over the roof, pretty, pretty easy to explain that the sun can no longer now get to the roof. So if you can cover the south-facing roof, which takes all the sun all day, right, you'll actually lengthen the time you'll have to do between re-roofing. That's because if the roof is only facing north, and you're north of the equator, obviously, it won't be getting much sun at all. So your 25-year roof, if it's out of the sun completely, like essentially if it was gonna be cloudy every day, you would get an extra five to 10 years out of your roof just by putting panels on your roof, that's pretty nice. So, um, now this is obviously regionally, not always gonna be in everybody's uh, best, um, it's always gonna fit everybody because, give an example, like in Massachusetts, Rhode Island, we have great, great incentives, which help your ROI on solar anywhere, depending on the price you pay and in your electric bill but anywhere between two and a half to four years for an ROI, which is great. And some of these incentives are guaranteed or locked in for 10 to 15 years. So after you've paid off your system, you've still negated 85, 95, maybe even 100% of your electric bill, whatever, um, and you still get these credits going forward, even after that's eliminated. So really great stuff. Obviously, a huge benefit financially if, if, if you live in an area where that's that's uh, available to you and then also the tax rebate I mean this is pretty obvious too um, I think I think most people are aware by now the 30% tax ITC that's the investment tax credit so what that is is for most people that's actually gonna be a rebate check because it's written as a credit 
because if you have that amount that you get taxed, where you pay in and then you get money back, well then if you if you if you do that, that's if you're in that if you're in that boat, then you'll actually get 30% of the roof. Of, I'm sorry, of the solar installation value, you'll get that back as well. And if you're one of those people that kind of breaks even or has to pay in, that's actually a huge benefit too. And a lot of our customers that see solar as an investment are the type of people that have to pay in because they're commissioned salespeople that, that make a decent amount of money or they're small business owners and things of the like. So they get the value and they actually like that it, it limits their tax liability at the end of the year or the following spring that they'll have to send in less or maybe we'll even have to send it any, which is always a nice change for someone who consistently has to send money in. So, now the other side of it, so we have a tax, um, I'm sorry, the people who think that sold is an investment, and then we also have the people, the mindset of people who think that it's a cost. So, these people here, it's, it's sometimes very difficult to get these people into this mindset, right? Because they think of it as, well, how much does it cost? How much is it... How much is it out of pocket? What's it gonna cost me? This marker is awesome, by the way. All right, there we go. Let's, you know what? That one's dead. Okay, so let's, let's try this again. So, all right, so here's what they're thinking right here is, what's the cost out of pocket? They don't see the value in all of these things, and that's a shame. And even if you discuss that with them, oftentimes they won't see it because all they see is, well, what's gonna cost me? So obviously financing and everything else, zero out of pocket, and as I videoed yesterday, if you watch it, the whole free solar, that's BS, you know that, please don't fall for that one. But So if, if you live in one of the places where the incentives apply, and we'll use DC example, so Washington DC will pay you $500 for every one kilowatt that you generate, and that's crazy. So I'll give an example, our systems are a German system, so let's say you go with an 8K system from us in DC, it will crank out over 10, 10 asteroid credits. So at $500 a piece, you get $5,000. Not bad. You'd get that back. That would, get, that would come to you. And that's quarterly. So you would get uh, $5,000 dollars five by 4 You would get that twelve fifty every quarter. Every, let's say 90 days, mailbox money. And you get those for 10 years. So you get a 40 quarters worth. So it's kind of nice. So, I mean, you get $50,000 back. In essence, if the market so trade the SREC commodities, if they fluctuate up and down, but they're generally speaking about $500. So these people, I mean, take the out of pocket, let's say the system, let's just say, is $40,000. So yeah, let's go to another marker. I think we have more. All right, so let's say the system is $40,000. You would get 30% from your ITC. All right, now if you do get that back as a rebate, that would be roughly about ten or eleven thousand dollars. Obviously, my math is, math game is not strong, so let's just call it ten thousand for now. You would get, you know, now your net cost is down to thirty, right? And I tend to write um, up and down. Apparently, this is something new, but I'm trying to stay in frame for the camera. So, all right. So your cost is now thirty. Now, if you get, like I said, those five hundred dollar credits, and you get those over ten years, your ten year projection, and of course. There's no promise it will always be $500 a credit, but if it does, let's just say that, okay, you would get back 50, you would get paid 50, you would net into the positive $20,000. So yes, there is still an out of pocket. There is because you have to pay for the system. Your first SREC check, I'll give you an example. If you if you have if you're available to the SREC market, I think there's about 10 to 12 states that are. So if you do get that. Your first check comes roughly between five to seven months after you're actually installed, meter swapped out, and you're up and running. And then after that first one, you get 39 more. But So there is out-of-pocket expense because if you were to finance the system and you think, well, I just let my ASRAC credits pay for, the, pay for the loan every month, which you could do, but for the first five, six, or seven months to get there, there is some out-of-pocket expense. So you have to watch out when people say there's no money down because a lot of advertisers will say that there usually is, okay? And obviously if it's a cash purchase, if you're if you're fronting all the money, if you're paying for it out of pocket, then you do have um, out of pocket expense. You do get paid back, but you do. But again, the people that generally speak and the people that see that it's an investment are the ones with the cash purchases, right? So there is an out-of-pocket expense, that's the cost, but you need to realize which mindset that you are, okay? If you think that solar is just a, what does it cost me? 
What you haven't taken into consideration, and this is unfortunate, is your electric bill is going to go up. Just like the sun's going to come up tomorrow, so is your electric bill every year. And as more people go solar, more people will, will be taken off the grid, so to speak, okay? And batteries are coming around and everything else. That means the electric company has got to charge the next person more money because their revenue has to stay either flatline or increase. They can't stop making less every year while their expenses, their workman's comp, and their insurances and everything else goes up. They need to replace that revenue. So if five people in a neighborhood with 10 people, if five of them go solar, What's, this, what's the electric company need to do? Those five people that still have no solar, they're gonna pay more, they're gonna pay significantly more. Now as an average, a national average, your electric bill will go up 4% every year on average, right? So sometimes it's only three, sometimes it's five, whatever, but going forward, now if you do the math of 10 years, that's 40%. So if your electric bill is $100 a month right now, it's $140 in 10 years. And that's, that's not including if solar does have to really gain traction and, and increase this and compound the issue. So, again, going back to the whole, what does it cost me? It's not just what is out of pocket. It's what does it cost me if I don't go solar today, but I wait five years and then I go solar because then it might be significantly more. Things to think about. So, I'll leave you guys with this. Um, thank you, Taylor, for making this for me because guys as you can see I'm terrible with writing so um, thanks for watching another episode of solar TV brought to you by all of us at solar wolf energy thank you